today for the first time I'm going to look through an exam that I didn't actually do myself as part of my degree. Specifically I'm going to have a look at financial mathematics, also sort of um, classed as quantitative finance. Now this probably is going to have enough mathematics in it for me to recognize but I've never really seen it in the financial context before so I thought it would be interesting to have a look through this exam. Another reason why I'm interested in this finance exam is because I know that a lot of people that go on to specialize in maths and physics and get PhDs in those fields end up working in finance companies without I guess direct academic training in finance and I'm interested to see what is it about the math and physics skills that the finance companies think uh, I guess so relevant and why would they hire people with a PhD in physics to come and work for Wall Street. Initially when I heard that I thought maybe that's quite a rare thing to happen but actually you can read all about the physics of Wall Street and in fact current economic theory and trading is based a lot upon uh, fundamental equations and practices that come from research physics and mathematics. I've seen a few of these financial recruiting firms myself. As a PhD student in physics, I've received emails um, from these companies saying things like, you know, come and work for us in finance. It doesn't matter that you don't have finance training. You can pick up all the um, necessary knowledge about assets and about stocks and all that on the job. What we're looking for are people with really good skills in uh, dealing with data, finding trends in data and a bit of coding as well. So I'm sort of curious to see, um, I guess this financial mathematics exam might show me what some of these skills are that would be need to be picked up on the job. Um, but really I'm just interested to see as someone with a background in math if I can even tackle this at all. There will be a link in the description for you to download this exam so you can read along with me. There's no solutions provided but I will put links to where a lot of the questions have come from. And let's have a look. So this exam is in three sections that are all kind of similar but section one here is probability theory and stochastic process. So probability sort of makes sense to have in a finance exam because financial markets are full of uncertainty. And stochastic process, what that refers to is I guess random processes or at least seemingly random processes. There are actually a lot of stochastic processes in science, in all fields of science, physics, chemistry, neuroscience, computer science. It's yeah, the idea of having something that seems random pops up more often than you might think. So in a way, learning stochastic processes and how to deal with them is not just going to help you in finance, but in a lot of fields of science. First, we have a question about the distributions of random variables. In this case, we have Poisson distribution and that's something that I have encountered before out of the context of finance. It can be used for all sorts of things. Most commonly the example is working out how many customers you might expect in a certain amount of time given some averages that you already know. Question 1a is actually compute the moment generating function of x and well that requires knowing what a moment generating function is but I did google that and it seems to be a way that simplifies finding the mean and variance. Question B is talking about Markov processes and a Markov process is also something that could appear not just in finance but in all kinds of science and it means that essentially there is no memory for a system so if something is a Markov process you should be able to predict its future from just its present state and having any memory or history about um, the system isn't going to help you. It's, it's I guess random um, and just that it doesn't depend on past events. Part A of this question says simple random walk and actually that's a um, phrase that I recognize from things like astrophysics and I think a random walk just refers to the stochastic or random process that could apply to a gas molecule 
bumping around or to even a foraging animal. It's essentially just a particle that moves in random directions until it eventually finds what it's looking for. So some of these terms already, like I recognize from physics and math, but you know, some of the rest of this question, I wouldn't know how to do. It's, it's using these terms in a context that's unfamiliar to me. Question C is um, asking about a Markov chain. And from what I understand, a Markov chain contains a set of states and a matrix containing the probabilities of transitioning from one state to another. The state of the chain at any time is a random variable, just like everything else on this page. Section two deals with volatility modeling. And from what I can tell, volatility in this sense refers to an annual standard deviation of the change in price or value of a financial security. I think the volatility is essentially a way that you can estimate a market risk. And the question on this page, which is just one question with many parts, I think concerns that idea. Probably the one word I recognize on this question is Brownian motion. Now, Brownian motion, I thought was a purely physics idea. It's, I guess, the random movement of microscopic particles in a fluid, whether it's air or water, caused by the bombardment of molecules in the medium that it's in. I think there's a famous experiment where pollen grains were dropped into water and you could see them bouncing around as if they were alive. But it was found that no, the pollen grains are not alive, they're just being um, bombarded by the molecules in the water. And it's actually one of Einstein's famous papers um, that discussed these ideas of Brownian motion. So it's interesting to see it used here in terms of finance and just looking at this exam, it actually comes up a few times. So I think um, modeling things randomly, just like you would in Brownian motion is actually quite important here. I don't recognize the context of a lot of the math and the questions on this page, but you, they seem to be doing things with variance, distribution. Um, so it looks like this question is mainly about statistics, just in a context that's unfamiliar to me as a math major. The final section here, stochastic calculus and differential equations. So like I've said, stochastic refers to random variables. So stochastic calculus would be the way that you model the random motion of, I guess in finance, asset prices. Um, and the difference between stochastic calculus and normal calculus is that stochastic calculus allows the derivative to have a random component determined by Brownian motion. And for a stochastic differential equation, um, say for the asset price, you'd be able to solve that um, to get a path of the stock price. The questions here are dealing a lot with integrals. I see one familiar friend of mine, uh, the phrase integration by parts, so that's used a lot in physics and math in general. Um, so nice to see it being used here as well. I've proved integration by parts many times, just not in the context of this stochastic um, calculus relating to finance. So I can see that some of the skills are transferable, but yeah, it, it does look a bit unfamiliar to me at this point. One way to get a feel for studying math or finance at university is to look at exams like this, but a much better way is to actually work through some exercises on the subject and put your knowledge to the test. On Brilliant.org, you can develop your mathematical skills through courses, including one on Math for Quantitative Finance. Brilliant guides you through a problem by breaking it down into its component pieces, helping you understand how they relate to each other, and then building back up to a conclusion. Brilliant also actually can help you apply for top firms in the industry and give you exposure to career opportunities in finance. If you are thinking about developing your math skills to propel your career, then go to brilliant.org slash tibbies and sign up for free. In addition, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching.